Hello, everyone. Today we are going to start our trip to the hardcore of molecular pharmacology. I cannot stress enough how important it is to learn this stuff well in order to avoid a failure in this course. In this video, we will cover the very basics of dose response curve, which is very easy for now. Dose response curve, three keywords. Dose, we normally write it as D. You can control the dose. Response, Q, you can measure the response. And the curve, you can draw the curve. The basic theory is that the response is a function of dose. People plot the response at different dose concentrations. In order to infer the relationship between the response and the concentration of the dose, in other words, to guess, but we guess wisely with models. On this page, there is a linear dose response curve. On the x-axis is the concentration of the dose, and on the y-axis is the response. For now, we assume there is no response when there is no drug, so no basal activity. When you increase the concentration of the agonist, the response will increase as well. However, the response will reach a plateau when the concentration of agonist is high enough, and there is a EC50. EC50 is the effective concentration of the agonist that can cause 50% of the Q max. So here is half of the Q max. This is a linear plot, and then here we have a semi-log plot. On the y-axis, it is still response. On the x-axis, it is logarithm of the concentration of the agonist. In this case, the x-axis starting from negative infinity because log x approaches negative infinity when x approaches zero from the positive end. The other end of the x-axis is positive infinity. The shape of the curve is like an S. I mean this S. And there is no longer EC50. Instead, there is a log EC50. In a more civilized way, we call the curve of this shape rectangular hyperbola. And now we are going to see some models. I mean the model of molecular pharmacology, not Victoria's Secret. You have your drug and you have your receptor. If they bind, they will form DR. Since this is a chemical reaction, it's in equilibrium. Two directions. You have K1 and K negative 1. These are the rate constants. Remember that the theory we have is that the response is a function of the drug. We assume that when the drug binds with the receptor, it will lead to the response. And there is intrinsic activity A here. In other words, the response is equal to A times DR. We assume a linear relationship here, and there is no basal activity. So there is no A0. Let's get back to the rate constants. The binding of the drug is a reversible reaction. The rate of the reaction going to the right equals the rate constant times the reactant times the um, concentration of the reactants. 
and the rate of reaction going to the right equals the rate constant times the product. In this model, we assume everything is at the thermodynamic equilibrium, which means V on is equal to V off. Therefore, K1 dr is equal to K negative 1 dr. By rearranging it, you have dr over dr. And uh, this is negative 1, k1. And we have a new constant which has a unit mole. This is very important. Kd has a unit, and the Kd is called the dissociation constant. This is the definition of Kd. Kd is the ratio between two rate constants. Now, let's go back to the basic theory. Q is a function of the dose. As we said, Q can be written as A times dr. Please recall that A is the intrinsic activity. So A times dr is a function of the drug concentration. In this equation, we have two terms, dr and d. So how can we relate these two terms? What we are trying to do now is to solve the mystery of F. What kind of form it is in this F? To solve this question, we have to make use of other terms, such as R and KD. So how do we bring them in? We need more equations. Are you excited? We now need equations of state. Equations of state. We have the total number of receptors, RT, equals R plus DR. Why? Because the receptors are in two forms, in the free form, which is R, and in the binding form with drug which is dr. Similarly, we also have a total number of drug. The drug can be in the free form or can be in the binding form. However, we assume that the binding form of drug is much more smaller, smaller than the total concentration and the weak cross this out. And then we have dt equals d. There are two terms don't change at all in this reaction. These two terms are the total concentration of the receptors. The other term that doesn't change at all is Kd, dissociation constant. It only varies with temperature. Yes. Number these equations for easier reference. We have equation one here. This is the mystery. We're trying to solve the relationship between dr and d. We only know there is a relationship as f here, but we don't know what kind of relationship it is. We have a second relationship. It is the definition of Kd, dissociate constant. We have two equations of state, rt and uh, dt. As we can see in equation number one, d is the independent variable. However, in equation number three, there is a free form of r. We don't want it because it can vary during the reaction. We only want d as the independent variable, not r that varies. Therefore, we are trying to replace R with something else. So how do we replace R? Let's look at equation number two. There is D, there is 
R, there's dr, and there's kd in equation number two. We can isolate r. So r equals kd times dr. dr is what we want for equation number one. And uh, we have a d. d is the independent variable. That is good. And uh, that's it. So now we can replace r with kd times dr over d, equation number 5. So let's put equation number 5 into equation number 3. We have rt, which is a constant, equals kd dr over d plus dr. So on the right side of this e new equation, we have dr in both terms. Let's isolate dr. We have rt equals dr times kd over d plus 1. Look at this equation. On the left hand side we have a constant rt. On the right hand side we have the dependent variable which is dr. And we have kd is a constant and uh, and d is the independent variable, and plus 1, 1 is a constant. That's what we want. Let's rearrange this new relationship to put dr, the dependent variable, on the left. So dr equals rt over kd over d plus 1. And then we rearrange this equation to make it look better. On the left hand side, we have dr. Right hand side, we have too many fractions. So we're going to multiply d on both top and bottom. You have rt d over d plus kd. We assumed Q equals A, which is the intrinsic activity, times dr. And that equals A times RT D and uh, D plus KD. So this is the form of the function. In the next video, we are going to take a deeper look at this function. Please make sure that you understand every step of the derivation. Also make sure that you understand why you have to do the steps. This is really important for your future study, especially when you encounter much more complicated models. Thanks very much for your time.